Pero bago po yon, let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that today we are going to be equipped, even, Lord, these co-laborers of mine in the field of the Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that out of this um, study that we could uh, come out with solutions, with good things, and if not new things, Lord, that we can, are going to be equipped, Lord, to uh, just put solutions on such gaps that we can identify today. Father, I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God speak to us, Lord, through your servant, and that they will not see my flaws, but they will see the power of God and that uh, our, uh, our callings, our ministry, Lord, is such as that. It is not ours, but we are just managers of this ministry. Lord, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify you today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Gusto ko i-share sa inyo, mga kapatid, itong aking PowerPoint. So, um, I don't know if I can share it. Uh, I'm able to share it. Uh, can you all see it? Yes, po. You amen. can see it. Praise God. Praise God. So I'd like to talk about a disciple's lifestyle. What is the lifestyle of a disciple? It is basically uh, the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. In the book of Chuck Kinley, I want to bear fruit. Sabi niya, the purpose of church is to evangelize the lost and disciple them to maturity. Again, it is basically the Great Commission, evangelize the lost, and the Great Commandment, which is love these people, disciple them, into the full measure of Christ, for them to become Christ. We all heard of that, we all know that, and we all are working towards that. But I like this book of uh, Chuck Kindley, I Want to Bear Fruit, and he gives such um, practical ways for a Christian to evangelize, and practical ways for pastors to bring their, their people into fruit-bearing Christians. No? Ang sabi po kasi ng mga Bible scholars, they claim that about 100,000 people a day go to hell. These people, without having the opportunity to hear the gospel and an opportunity to be saved, they go to hell every day by the throng. 100,000 people a day. So we can compute that. About 4,000 people go to Eternal damnation, about 4,000 per hour. So, bago po matapos o pagkatapos po nitong aking uh, presentation, about 4,000 people have already went to hell without having heard the gospel. Many Christians do not fulfill the Great Commission nor the Great Commandment of Christ. There's a great number as well of, for new believers to get lost again. Yung bang nagbabackslide. And there are old believers who get tricked you know, and go back to their old lifestyle. The question is why? They were not, the answer is, they were not properly discipled. Whether we agree or not, whether we uh, see this or not, but it boils down for a Christian to go back to his old lifestyle is because they were not properly Disciple. A lot of people think that the church should disciple their child or their children. No? Alam nyo, this is a fatal misconception. No wonder when they were young, like I said a while ago, we can drag them to church. Then at their teens and student life, they engage in the ministry, naging worship team member, naging Sunday school teacher, and so on and so forth. No? But after graduation, becoming a professional, you don't see them much in church. Why? Again, like I said, they did not mature into the full measure of Christ. That's the problem. The way I see it, that's the problem. Kaya kapag ka nag-boyfriend, alam naman nila na mali ang pakikipag-relasyon uh, uh, sa hindi ka pamatok, sa hindi ka pareho ng, ng uh, pananampalataya. But hey, they still do. A lot of people, a lot of young people engage in premarital, premarital sex. Kasi yung kanilang tinatawag na conviction is not well placed. 
marami, marami tayo narinig, mga churches, worship leader, they fall, um, nagkasala because of this and that. Again, it all boils down for them not being properly discipled. I'm not going to point fingers to, to whomever kasi nangyari din sa amin yan. Nangyari din sa ibang mga churches. I don't think that there's a church na walang ganyan. Marami pong ganyan. So the question now is, uh, the question is, what is a disciple? We all know, alam na, mga pastor tayo, we all know that a disciple, sabi nga, is, is a student, a learner, a follower. You know, all of these definitions are not wrong. However, they are not complete. They are not complete. Ang sabi po, a disciple, a disciple starts with personal development. A disciple must work on his spiritual development. The golden standard is the Word of God. That's the standard. It's not the pastor. It's not the culture, the Gavin Church, not your denomination, but it's the Word of God. We don't get to choose which part of the Bible is applicable to us and which are not. No matter what the law of the land is, the Bible call, if the Bible calls it sin, we must stay away from it. Yun yung standard. No? Yun yung standard natin. So, hindi tayo pwede magsama na hindi kasal. Hindi tayo pwede hindi magbigay ng sokle. Hindi tayo pwede hindi mag tights. Hindi tayo pwede ganito ganyan. Whatever is applicable lang, yun lang sa atin. No. The standard is the Word of God. Even if it is the law of the land, if it goes against the Word of God, then we must flee from it. We must stay away from it. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Oh, that one of you should shut the temple doors so that you would not uh, light a useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty, and I will accept no offerings from your hands. Shut the door. It means that any unbiblical practice should stop. These practices are useless fires. We as Christians are often in the same positions when, when we reflect God to our friends and families. The question is, what image or attitude do we reflect to them when we when they see us, if we casually accept sin, you are like these people in the time of Malachi. God is not pleased. Hindi pwede sabihin, white lies naman yan eh. Puting, ano yan? Puting kasinungalingan, white lie. It helps. Even if it is a purple lie, even if it is a blue lie, it's still a lie. Ang isang taong kumukuha na hindi kanya, ang tawag ay magnanakaw. Galit na galit tayo na nawawala ang ilang bilyong piso mula sa uh, PhilHealth. Galit na galit tayo. Pero hindi tayo nagagalit kapag ka uh, may kumuha ng 10 pesos mo. Bakit ganon? 10 pesos, kinuha ng hindi nagpapaalam versus bilyong piso kinuha na hindi napapaalam, pareho lang ang tawag. Ang tawag ay magnanakaw. So, we cannot be good in one sin. Ah, okay lang yan. Versus the other sin is not. We cannot have that. Ah, naghiwalay sila kasi ng babae. Ganyan talaga mga lalaking Pilipino. Pero kapag ka dalawang babae nagsasama at may relasyon, ah, nakadiri. Bakit ibang standard? Ang sabi ng Panginoon, do not light useless fires. We cannot have one standard okay, tapos yung isa hindi okay. No? Hindi pwedeng ganoon. We are to adopt God's standard. God's way, God's way must be in our lives. We must turn away from the standards this world has injected in us and pursue the ways of God. This verse said, I will accept no offerings from your hand. God is not pleased with this attitude. The Bible says in Revelations 3.15, I know your deeds, what you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. Verse 16, 
So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Ayaw ng Diyos. He is not pleased with this kind of attitudes that we have. So we must shut this door because God is not pleased with this. Looking at Ezra in chapter 7, verse 10, in King James Version, it says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the, the ways of the Lord and to do them. God, uh, Ezra, prophet Ezra, had prepared his heart. In another version, in the New uh, International Version, it says, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observation of the law of the Lord. So makita natin, kanina is he wants to do it, but this time it's observe the, uh, the law of the Lord. What does this mean, Pastor? Kasi we cannot just be studying the Word of God and yet not putting it into practice. A disciple, a true disciple of God, is not just studying the Word of God, but he practices the ways of God. Kasi sabi ng James 1.22, do not merely listen to the Word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Huh? Now, another version nitong ating tinitignan, Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, is, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord, and to practice it. We need to practice. We need to apply it. Marami tayong alam na Bible, na Bible verses. Maraming mga anak natin Bible verses, uh, memory verses, and, and, and so on and so forth. But they never practiced it. Kaya nga kapag kami situation that they need to make decisions, they are baffled. They do not know what to do because they never get to practice it. A true disciple learns the ways of God. And they apply the ways of God. They not just learn the ways of God, they apply the way of God, the ways of God, just like Jesus. Kaya nga tinawag tayong Kristiyano. Kaya nga tinawag na mga Kristiyano. The name of the Lord, the name of our Jesus Lord, Lord Jesus, is with us. So we must be like Him. Di ba, alam naman natin that hinubad niya kanyang pagkadiyos. Ito, medyo mo, baka magkaroon tayo ng debate. Hinubad niya kanyang pagkadiyos, pero nagagawa niya pa rin ang mga divine activities. Nagpapagaling siya, nagpapalaya uh, siya ng demonyo, nagpapa, uh, nagbubuhay siya ng patay. Why? It is because the Lord G, uh, Father, the Father God, the Heavenly Father, was so pleased with him that He granted Him also. He granted Him. Again, inubad niya kanya pagka but because he, the, uh, the Heavenly Father was pleased uh, pleased by Jesus, he's, uh, He was well pleased, He granted Jesus, though in His human form, can still use His power as God. So we must be like that. Why was He pleased? Because He was applying the, the, the will, the ways of the Father, that's why He can do such things. Kung tayo ay disciple, kung ating anak ay disipulo, kung ating mga miyembro ay disipulo, we must do the same. Apply the ways of God in our lives. Balikan lang po natin, ano? Kasi, ang, ang, ang nais ko kasi, a disciple is not just Him he, being a disciple, uh, uh, tawag nito, improving His spiritual life, but he also makes one be a disciple and he becomes and he makes one as well. We learn that we need to be a disciple and we must make other disciples. As I looking back in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, it says there, Ezra ano, set his heart. He decided to study the word and practice it. And the second thing that he has to do is to teach it to others. The best way for us to learn is when you teach it to others as well. Kasi yun ang principle ng Panginoon. What you sow is what you, what you reap. You will reap when you 
teach being a disciple the ways of God to others, you yourself are applying it to yourself. Y yun yung principle ng ating Panginoon. So, katulad po na sinabi ni Apostle Pablo kay Timoteo, sabi niya, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So you could see that even Apostle Paul reflects what Ezra is saying. Now, of course, not everyone is a teacher, but everyone can learn to teach. Now, this points us in a small group setting, not inside the church, actually. What Paul mentioned to Timothy, he was pointing out not in a church setting, but he points in a small group setting. Small groups is more intimate, non-superficial, uh, re relatable. People can share, but inside the church, we only come together, congregate, to worship the Lord, celebrate the new life, uh, celebrate the faithfulness of God, but wala talaga doon yung exchange of experiences. Kasi it's a, a, congreg con a congregational meeting. But in a small group, setting, then you can express, you can share things. Kaya nga, ang sabi ni Apostol Pablo kay Timoteo, whatever that you have heard from me in the witness of many people and trust, look for faithful men, reliable men. Look for them that are able to teach others. So you can see in this drawing, you sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo four generations. From him to Timothy, then look for faithful men who can teach others? Discipleship, as far as this is concerned, is not just one-on-one, -on -one, but one-on-fourth generation. Tayo mga pastors, tayo po, ay, we are in a unique uh, position that we should find out, look for people who you can clone with. Kasi nga, sabi na Apostol Pablo, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Christ. So as a pastor, we should be discipling people whom others can disciple. Kasi kung mabalikan po natin yung uh, Ezra 7.10, uh, kasi Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach the statutes and ordinances of God to Israel. So if you're going to read the whole chapter of Ezra uh, chapter 7, King Artaxerxes told Ezra in verse 25, he said, You, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, sabi niya, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge of the people who are in the region beyond the river. Meaning, humanap ka ng mga faithful people who can judge other people who can teach other people, all such as know the laws of your God, so that they themselves be discipled and teach those who do not know them, so that they can teach it to others. Parang pareho lang lang sinabi ni Apostle Pablo. No? So in the Old Testament pa lang, nandun na yung principle that in order for us to grow and the other people to grow as well, is to properly disciple each one. We must disciple each one. So, ang dito natin makikita mga, mga kapatid, mga minamahal, we are to look for reliable men and women who can then teach others. Now, you can ask, why should we make disciples? Alam natin naman ito, mga pastors. Why should I make disciples? Number one, it's not because of you. It's not about me or you. No, it's not. It is the focus of Jesus. When we see the, the 12 disciples of Jesus, at the center of the 12 is Jesus. It is not about us, our church, our ministry, or whatever. It is about Jesus Christ. The number two reason is because it is the authority of G that was given to Jesus. The question is, whose voice do we respond to? Our boss sa ating uh, denomination? 
whose voice do we respond to? I remember when I was in this organization, whom I will not uh, say the name of the organization. I said to the uh, leaders of that organization in the Philippines, I said, Tara, tayo po mag-evangelize, mag-training tayo on how to evangelize and so on and so forth. Uh, after a whole day of presentation, bigla pong binaril yung aking presentation na sabi sa akin, eh, we cannot do that because we need uh, approval from the head office. It really baffled me. Sabi ko, ha? Bakit kailangan pa ng approval? Eh, mag evangelize nga tayo. Ba't kailangan pa mag ng approval? It is, kaya ang tanong is, whose voice do we respond? It is Jesus' authority that we should follow. Kasi ang dami sabi nga ng Panginoon. Many people call Him Lord, Lord, but they don't, don't follow Him. They don't obey Him. It is His command. Jesus commanded all of us to do the Great Commission. To disciple, baptize people, tell them about the good news. And also, it is His desire that many people would come to repentance, that many people would be transformed, that many people would be Christ-like. And lastly, the reason for discipleship is it is the mission. It is the mission of Jesus to colonize earth for the kingdom of God. Remember, when we were colonized by the, by the Spaniards, uh, they taught us their language, they taught us their dressing, they taught us their, the way of life. They taught us everything because we were colonized. The same thing with the mission of Jesus Christ when he came to earth is to colonize earth for the kingdom of God. Making disciples aligns with God's mission to the world. If we fail to do this, we are missing a whole thing with our ministry. Now, the question natin is, uh, sinong gagawa niyan, pastor? Paano ba yan gagawin? You see, the Christian faith is not just about you and Jesus. It is to be shared. The best place to start in discipleship is in your home your own home have we discipled our own children do we have the same fervor the same passion as with our spouse or vice versa nagtanong po ako niyan no sa mga preachers kids it is very easy to know if we have uh discipled our families. Tanungin mo, paano ma-born again? Kadalasan po ng mga sagot ng mga bata ay hindi nila alam kung ano lang naririnig nila sa church. Please remember, if our children go to church because of us, it does not automatically mean that they are discipled. One of the heartaches of a pastor is when their children chooses not the ways of God. One of the, one of the biggest heartaches of a pastor. No? Biglang nag-asawa na hindi kristyano. Biglang gustong ma-emancipate, lumayo sa ministry, and so on and so forth. So the best place to start discipleship is with your own home. Do we... Um, do we have do a vibrant, a growing relationship with God as a family? Or are our children or our spouses reliant on our own faith? Nakadepende lang ba sila sa faith natin? Pag maayos ang pakiramdam natin, maayos din sila. Pag hindi maayos ang pakiramdam natin, hindi na sila maayos ang pakiramdam. Do they have a vibrant and growing relationship with Christ even without you? Those are the questions. Those are the easy tests uh, to see if our own family are, have growing relationship with God. You just ask them the basic tenets of faith. Para ba maborn again? Para ba masave? Try nyo, malalaman nyo kung anong, situ- anong uh, kondisyon ng inyong mga anak, ng inyong asawa. No? 
sana po ay uh, makita natin yon. Again, the Christian faith is not just between you and Jesus. It is about it is to be shared. And the very first person that we all need to disciple is our own families. Even today, ngayon na mayroong pandemya, we can we can only gather 50%, you know, in in our churches. And most of the people are so afraid to come out of, the, of their houses. Naka-live lang sila, nasa live streaming lang sila. But how do we know that they are really growing via live streaming? Nakabukas lang yung ating live stream, tapos sila baka naglalaba, nagluluto. They, they're not really into it. How do we know? So I've been praying ever since in the lockdown in March 14. So how does a church, how can the church move forward with this pandemic? Mga minamahal, we can start with our own family. And we can look for people who are reliable, who would do the same with their own families. Ang sabi po ng, uh, ng Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Verse 8, sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. Verse 9, if it bears fruit next year, fine. You know, I believe spiritual fruit come about when we toil on it, when we work on it, when we um, cultivate it purposefully. It doesn't come wildly, no, na, ay sana magbuka. No, you have to be purposefully cultivate it so that the fruit will come. There are many materials that we can use to start the discipleship of our own families. But the thing is, we have to start it. What else do we do? We cannot meet. We cannot have trainings in church. But you can look for faithful people that will uh, uh, disciple their own families. Mga minamahal, we cannot go back as a church, as your own denomination, or as a church, where the pre-pandemic ways that you have, we cannot. You have to do something. Lahat tayo naapektuhan ng churches natin, ministry natin, even collections, di ba? Kami nga, nung uh, the first three months of the pandemic, when we had the FB live streaming, about the first five minutes, of our live streaming, we hit 100 people watching the first five minutes. And then it grows as the time went. But after the, uh, on the fourth, fifth, sixth months after the pandemic, abakalahati na lang yung nanonood. And then on the seventh and eighth months, aba one fourth na lang nanonood. Why is that? Ang sabi ng mga. IT people, it is called the live streaming fatigue. People now just turn on their gadgets, but they don't really tune in. Kaya nga lahat tayo, di ba? Ang ating collection nga, eh, lahat buwagsak. Maraming ako, as a pastor, I had so many heartaches. For seven or eight months, hindi ko nakikita yung leaders ng church namin. Kasi natatakot because of the pandemic. And then one time, I, I, was, uh, I was in a mall buying something. I saw the person in a mall. Napaka-sakit sa loob. Hindi makapunta ng church pero nakaka-mall. Ano yun? Collection. Bumaba. Hindi makapag-tights. Pero lagi naka-food panda. Ano yun? Lahat tayo may ganyan experiences. So I've been praying and the Lord has uh, led me into this. The reason why this is happening. The Lord is exposing the real disciples. 
you and I, as a pastor, we are to account on the sheep that have been placed under our watch. And I pray that this message to us will help us see the gap and then place the solution on that gap. Again, like I said, there are many materials that we can use to start discipleship of our own family and those faithful people we can choose that we can find that they will do the same. So that pandemic or not, lumalago po ang spiritual na buhay ng ating mga kasama. The question is, will the Lord find us bearing fruits even through pandemic? Ang, naku, baka December tapos na ang pandemia. Breaking news, sabi po ng World Health Organizations, ito pong uh, pandemic ito, this COVID-19, will stay at least two more years. We cannot afford not to do anything. We cannot afford to sit this out. The Lord will account for the sheep that are under us. Will He find the sheep under us bearing fruits? And that's why in CBMA, CBMA um, Education uh, Department thought of you know, uh, something to help the pastors as well. On October 30, 2020, at 8 p.m. via Zoom, Meron po tayong usapang house church. What is a house church? And how do you set it up? In the book of Acts, when, uh, wala namang pong ano eh, J-I-L in the book of Acts. Wala pong CCF. Wala pong malalaking denominations. They were just called church, the church. And one of the structures that we can find in the, in the book of Acts is the pastor in the church of Jerusalem was... Um, uh, James, a structure. But the church function in house churches. And how does that go? How, how can we uh, revive that in our times today? On October 30, we have distinguished people who are going to help us and give us uh, pointers on how to set up house churches uh, called Usapang House Church. It, the, again, this is sponsored by uh, CBMA on the 30th of October at 8 p.m. by Zoom. So I'm inviting everyone to please tune in on this. And we are going to announce the link and give you the link um, soon with this. But we, again, like I said, we have distinguished speakers about this. We have uh, a bishop. We have a doctor, doctorate. Um, uh, and we have a chairman. We have um, uh, a theologist who will help us in this Usapang House Church. So in my conclusion today, alam ko po, mabilis lang ako, please, tayo po mga pastors, do not ask what the church can do for our growth. Do not ask your denomination what you can do, uh, what they can do for the growth. Do not ask anyone, your bishop, to, to help you grow the church. Don't ask them. But ask what you can do for the growth of the church under you. My prayer is this, for everyone who have been listening, is that we would step out from the box, from our status quo. It is good that we have this pandemic because for me, the Lord allows this to happen, allowed this to happen, so that there will be no more mega church, no more small church. Everyone is the same. Number two, the blessing of this pandemic is that the Lord is exposing the real disciples and those who are pretending to be disciples. Number three blessing that I, that I see here is that the Lord is showing us what to do. The only way for us to put a, a solution to a problem is when we find the problem. And my prayer, again, is that um, after this talk, is that we would be able to see the problem ensuing any ministry in this uh, pandemic time. Let us bow our heads and pray.
Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that I have uh, said my, 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 my peace. What you have shown your servant, O oh God. The problems that churches have nowadays. But not only the problem, but you have given us, Lord, solution. Lord, this new, brand new problem have an old solution. And you have given us, Lord, that. Father, I pray, Lord, that every pastor, every bishop, every servant you have watching this live stream, Lord, will, will set their heart into uh, giving the solution, Lord, that we must grow our ministry, our churches in such a way that even with this crisis, Lord, there is a way for each sheep under our ministry to grow and bear fruit. Father, we pray, O oh God, that as you check up on our fruits, Lord, that you might find, Lord, branches in, in our churches that bear fruit. Not just few branches, but many branches that bear fruit. Father, I pray, Lord, that if this is... Uh, uh, would light up some gray areas, especially uh, uh, pastors who, who do not know what to do next. Lord, I pray also, Lord, for the success of BCTO's mentoring, that every time that they would teach, Lord, that we can pick up good things, new things, and uh, fresher things, Lord, on how to shepherd. Father, I pray, Lord, for the leadership of this group, Give them, Lord, fresh ideas um, that we can relate to, that we can use uh, in our ministries. We honor you and bless you. We magnify you today, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. At amen. Amen po. Hallelujah. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig sa mabilis kong uh, pagtuto. Pagpalaan po tayo lahat ng Panginoon. Sige po. Are there any questions po ba? So now we can have our question and answer portion. Kung meron po kayong tanong, sabihin niyo lang po, raise your hand, and uh, or just unmute your audio, and then I believe Pastor Ruel is ready to answer. Any question po? Uh, 